chemical bonding the another chapter of of inorganic chemistry okay after this i'll go to the black black screen or right chemical bond tell me what do you know about a chemical bond what all things do you know about it what is a chemical bond first of all how do you define a chemical bond all atoms forms chemical bond okay does all atom forms chemical bond no what all atoms we have it does not form chemical bond noble gases all noble gases okay what is the purpose why atoms forms chemical bond to get stability okay to get stability and what is the reason of stability what is the thing that is atom is looking for and in order to achieve that it makes bond octet octet is a factor right any other factor okay fine so little bit of idea you have basically yes low energy state fine so basically um yes your answer is correct that atoms have tendency to form bond in order to gain stability right octet is one of the way by which atom has tendency atom you know try to gain stability to attain octet what is octet all atoms tries to have eight electron in their valence shell that is we call it as octet rule okay but octet rule is not the only thing for an atom to gain stability okay it is just one small theory in fact most of the atom does not follow octet rule there are only few atoms which follows octet rule okay so obviously octet is not the only reason there are other things also which will discuss in this chapter okay so first of all when atoms tries to form a bond okay so there must be some condition which makes the atoms which allows the atom to form a bond like for example if i consider oxygen right in the atmosphere oxygen exist as an atom or as a molecule right oxygen exist as o2 molecule right diatomic molecule nitrogen exist as again diatomic molecule that is n2 right phosphorus exist as tetraatomic p4 molecule sulfur exist as exist as s8 molecule right but you see both oxygen and sulfur belongs to the same group nitrogen phosphorus belongs to the same group but their bonding ability is not same one forms a diatomic molecule other one forms polyatomic molecule if you look at the structure in case of nitrogen it has n triple bond n structure oxygen also we have o double bond o two lone pair on the oxygen atom phosphorus is 
tetrahedral geometry, the four phosphorus atom plays at the corner like this. This phosphorus. Right? Sulfur exists as like this. It is, we call it as crown like structure. Crown structure of sulfur. Looks like a crown. The point is why certain atoms form multiple bonds. When I say multiple bonds, means double or triple bond. Why phosphorus is not able to form a double bond? Why sulfur is not able to form a double bond like oxygen or like nitrogen? So there must be some you know, reason behind this. Okay, a reaction condition we have. All these things we can understand here in this chapter. But yes, certain things you will study in inorganic chemistry also when you do P block elements, they're also will discuss. But yes, you will have an idea of all these things after in this chapter that is chemical bonding. Okay, how sigma bond forms, how pi bond forms, why phosphorus is not able to make a pi bond, why sulfur, sulfur is not able to make a pi bond, right? All these things you will understand it, right? So first of all, we understand what are the different types of bond we have, correct? And then we'll go into the theory of these bonds, okay? What are the different theories by which the atom forms bond. So what are the different types of bond, first of all? Covalent, ionic, any other? Covalent, ionic, coordinate. Okay. See, first of all, the bonds are classified into two categories, two main categories. Okay, you must you must have not done all these things. Types of bond you write down. Two types of bond we have. The first type is The first type is interatomic bond. What do you understand by this term interatomic bond? Between atoms, right? Bond between atoms, okay? So this is basically interatomic bonds the term itself suggests these are the bonds between atoms, interatomic bonds. Further, it is classified into following categories ionic bond, covalent bond, and we have coordinate bond. And metallic bond. And metallic bond. These are the bonds here. Mainly we'll discuss these three in this chapter. Metallic bonds are the bonds between the metal ions and the electrons. Okay. They are the interatomic bond. Similarly, we have intermolecular bonds also, bonds between the molecules. Write down. Bonds between the molecules. Oh, yes.
intermolecular bonds and this is nothing but the bond between the molecules okay for example we have van der waal forces force of attraction second one is second one is hydrogen bond hydrogen bond also we have two types the first one is intermolecular hydrogen bond and the second one is intramolecular intermolecular and intramolecular hydrogen bond intermolecular between the two molecules intramolecular between the same molecule copy this down okay one by one we'll discuss all these bonds the first one you write down ionic bond ionic bond we also call it as electrovalent bond electrovalent bond what is electrovalent bond write down it is actually a force of attraction attraction between cation and and anion between the cation and anion it is non directional also it is non directional and these are the bond forms between the atoms of opposite nature opposite nature by complete exchange of electron by complete exchange of electron for example you see we have nacl how nacl forms na loses one electron forms na plus 2 8 1 electronic configuration is and once it loses one electron its configuration is 2 comma 8 so it gains its octet one electron goes out 
So the sodium is also happy in this state because it has its octet complete. On the other hand, chlorine takes one electron and converts into Cl minus. So it is two eight seven. It requires one electron. Two eight eight. So chlorine is also happy. Both has its octet complete. So when this Na plus and Cl minus comes closer, right? We'll have an electrostatic force of attraction. force of attraction, which we call it as, which we call it as ionic bond or electrovalent. So it is just an electrostatic force of attraction between the positive charge ion and the negative charge ion that is cation or anion. Done. Yeah. So this is the ionic bond. Okay. Now one more thing you see here in detail if you go. Basic thing is that only. When sodium loses its electron, so for that we require ionization energy, i.e. one. When chlorine accepts one electron, it requires electron affinity and it converts into Cl minus. Okay, and then Na plus Cl minus combines, it converts into NaCl. And Cl minus NaCl. So this is the removal of lattice energy. It forms NaCl lattice, and hence the lattice energy comes out. So what all energies are involved into this? Ionization energy involved, electron affinity involved, and lattice energy involved. Okay, ionization energy you have to provide in. It is nothing but electron gain enthalpy. Also, you can say. Chlorine takes this electron, converts into Cl minus, and this is the removal of lattice energy. When NaCl lattice forms, some amount of energy comes out into this. Okay, so overall, what we can write here, all these energies are involved in the formation of formation of NaCl lattice. What, why, or of Because bond formation is always exothermic. Molecules, atoms are going towards the stable state. So obviously it has to go towards the lesser energy state. Some amount of energy comes out into this. So your doubt was electron gain enthalpy also, no? So it is the amount of energy releases when an electron is added to an isolated gas is added. Did you get it? Or what exactly your doubt is in electron gain enthalpy? Tell me. Achha, more negative or more positive? Negative means energy releases, basically. Okay? Positive means energy is getting consumed. More negative, so that that is what the meaning of the negative and positive sign. Negative means energy releases, positive means energy consumes, right? So more negative means more amount of energy releases. Like minus 10 and minus 12 if you compare. 
So minus 12 is more negative than minus 10. But both minus 10 and minus 12, it represents that 10 kilojoule of energy releases and 12 kilojoule of energy releases. Yes. Any doubt? That's what negative and positive sign means, nothing much. Right, okay. So these are the energies involved into this, okay? One more thing you must take care of, the natural you know, state of sodium is solid. Means sodium exists in solid state. And we are providing ionization energy. You see the ionization energy is defined only for gaseous atom. So in this gaseous, gaseous atom, we can provide ionization energy one, then it converts into Na plus gas and one electron goes out. First of all, to, for this, you must need to convert this solid into gas. So for that, we require the enthalpy of sublimation. Enthalpy of sublimation plus ionization energy converts into this, okay? Chlorine, the natural state of chlorine is gas only. One electron you are adding. So it is electron gain enthalpy of it or electron affinity and Cl minus we have. All these energy, if you add, you will get the enthalpy of formation. So delta H, F for NaCl, we can write enthalpy of sublimation plus ionization energy plus we require electron affinity right minus we required lattice energy because lattice energy comes out so from this you if you know the enthalpy of formation you can find out the lattice energy of any substance this is the indirect method to find out the lattice energy of any substance. Okay. One second. Now, since ionization energy and electron gain enthalpy is involved into this, electron affinity is involved into this, okay. Then, which element can easily form ionic bond? For that, the condition we have, right now, favorable condition for the formation of ionic bond. for the formation of ionic bond that is that is low ionization energy okay low ionization energy next what we can write high electron affinity high electron affinity and high lattice energy. More energy releases, more stability, the compound will gain. Whatever the value of Ea, electron affinity, it may be positive or negative, we'll write down with the sign. Okay, lattice energy comes out, so we'll take it as negative. Yes, Pradyun understood. Okay. So this is the condition required. Now, what you have to uh, you know, keep in mind is higher the electron negative, see what happens here, one atom is releasing electron and other one is gaining electron, right? So other one should have, should be more electron negative and the first one should have less electron negative. That's why the, this kind of bond forms 
between the atoms of opposite nature one is electro positive other one is electro negative so mainly this is the bond forms between metals and non metals metals when combines with non metals it forms ionic bond it forms ionic bond okay so metal we can consider mainly g1 g2 elements of group 1 group 2 to some extent g3 also we consider g13 sorry boron family to some extent not much g1 g2 group 1 group 2 elements we can take group 13 also we can take to some extent non metals could be group 15 group 16 group 17 these are the non metals so the bond forms between the elements of these groups are mainly ionic bond. Got it? There's a term called electrovalency. Term called electrovalency. It is a number of electron gained or lost in forming a bond in forming a bond number of electron gain or loss in forming a bond so electrovalency for elements of group 1 the electrovalency ev is 1 for group 2, the electrovalency is 2. For group 13, the electrovalency is 3. Maximum possible, uh, you know, this thing, uh, exchange of electron is this. So all these elements, group of elements, loses electrons. These many electrons, it can lost. Electron lost, 1, 2, and 3. The electronegative elements, group 15, 16, and 17, this will gain electron. Like for example, you see, group 15 is nitrogen family, can take three electrons. Group 16 is oxygen family, can take two electrons. And group 17 can have one electron. This is the electrovalency and electrons gain here. One note you write down, higher the difference between Higher the difference between the group number, higher the difference between the group number, more will be the electronegativity difference and more will be the ionic character in the bond. Higher is the difference between the group number, more will be the electronegativity difference, and more will be the ionic character in the bond. Okay, 
next slide down the lattice energy because na plus cl minus forms so it is the it is a lattice that forms by the combination of na plus and cl minus okay and when the lattice forms there are some amount of energy evolves in this process okay so how to find out the lattice energy of any lattice okay little bit i have discussed already right how to find out the lattice energy of any lattice so lattice energy uh there is no direct method to find out the lattice energy of any lattice but indirectly we can find it okay and we can find it indirectly by the method called bond haber cycle okay so write down the heading in this sorry right down this is the indirect method to find out indirect method to find out the lattice energy of any lattice lattice energy of any lattice okay so suppose we have this one we'll take an example of uh, uh, so nacl only na solid plus half of cl2 gas converts into nacl solid okay so first of all this na we need to convert this into na gas and then this converts into na plus gas this chlorine also you need to convert this into chlorine atom and then this chlorine atom must convert into cl minus okay and when these two combines okay and when these two combines lattice energy comes out and forms nacl lattice okay so what are the energy involved here you see in the first one we have enthalpy of sublimation nacl it forms delta h of sublimation and then we have ionization energy here we have bond energy you need to break the chlorine chlorine bond since half mole we have so half of the bond energy you need to supply and then we have here the electron affinity of it electron affinity lattice energy then it releases okay so the enthalpy of formation of this delta f of h this means enthalpy of formation of nacl this is equals to the enthalpy of sublimation all these energy will add plus will have the ionization energy plus will have half of be bond dissociation energy plus will have electron affinity whatever electron affinity negative mainly we get minus of e plus will have lattice energy releases minus of lattice energy so this is is the equation we have once this enthalpy of formation you have you can put all these value and you can find out the lattice energy all these value will be given in the question you don't have to calculate this bond energy be is the bond energy of chlorine chlorine bond that you need to break
yes cl2 you need to convert into the atom that is chlorine atom enthalpy of sublimation for phase change solid to gas if you need to convert you need to provide that energy that energy is known as enthalpy of sublimation okay done so this process this method we call it as enthalpy we call it as von hebert cycle okay uh all everything will be given all the energy which is written here you cannot find out this energy so it will be given in the question okay however the thing is not that important okay they won't ask you these questions in the exam next the properties of ionic compound write down first one write down physical state the molecule which has ionic bond physical state is mainly solid it has high melting point and boiling point these are bad conductor of bad conductor of electricity in solid state in solid state right on but in aqueous state they are good conductor but in aqueous state they are good conductor ionic bond is non directional okay so these are the some properties of these compounds here okay next write down covalent bond second type covalent bond it is formed by the sharing of electron is the sharing of electrons and the sharing of electron takes place electron takes place 
in such a way in such a way that their octet is complete the octet gets complete sorry octet gets complete so in order to complete their octet they the shared electrons okay but in case of hydrogen the octet is not possible in bracket write down except hydrogen except h2 okay so if you look at this uh, you know examples we have h2 molecule and this forms by the sharing of electrons of the two hydrogen atom one one electrons right so each of the hydrogen atom remember this in the bonding state we consider the two electrons for both hydrogen like if i ask you how many electrons this hydrogen has in this bonding state your answer would be two how many electrons this hydrogen has your answer would be again two so we'll we'll count the bonding electrons for the bonded atoms okay this electron for this one this electron for this one okay so we have two electrons here so we say that hydrogen molecule completes its duplet it's not octet but it is duplet if you consider hcl so in hcl the duplet of hydrogen is there but the octet of chlorine is there because chlorine has eight electrons hydrogen has only two electrons chlorine complete octet hydrogen is duplet in o2 we have double covalent bond o double bond o so we have double covalent bond and in n2 we have triple covalent bond triple covalent bond covalent bond and finished case so this is called covalent bond next one is coordinate bond the third type is coordinate bond coordinate bond we also call it as dative bond coordinate bond or dative bond so what is coordinate bond you see write down these are the bonds in which these are the bonds in which the electron pair these are the bonds in which the electron pair generates from
generates from the same atom Okay. There the bond forms when the electron pair involves in bonding generates from the same atom. I'll explain this. You see, first of all, uh, a molecule we have NH three, and in which the nitrogen has one lone pair of electron. and an electron pair acceptor we have for example h plus so what happens in this when this comes closer to this the nitrogen donates its lone pair of electron into the vacant orbital of h plus and it converts into this h h H and a positive charge on nitrogen because it donates its electron pair. So this bond that forms, we call it as coordinate bond. Coordinate or dative bond. Okay, coordinate or dative. the two electron it originates from nitrogen only hydrogen has no electron h plus has no electron here but still it managed to make a bond with this nitrogen since it accepts the electron pair from the molecule which donates electron pair we call it as electron pair donor electron pair donor and this one is electron pair acceptor accepts electron okay this is what the coordinate bond is okay so this arrow from donor to acceptor this arrow is the coordinate bond and this representation is the old methodology this is the old methodology nowadays we represent this coordinate bond in a different manner and we'll dis we'll discuss that coordinate bond is the bond in which again i'm repeating the definition guys one second coordinate bond is the bond in which the electron pair right on like the shared pair of electron originates from the same atom shared pair of electron originates from the same atom that is what happening here nitrogen donates its electron to h plus ion same atom is giving its electron hence the bond is coordinate yes fine okay like i said this is the old methodology the arrow representation now nowadays we represent coordinate bond in a different fashion okay one note you write down first of all one note you write down nowadays coordinate bond coordinate bond is considered as is considered as a type of covalent bond nowadays coordinate bond ep is the electron pair electron pair acceptor electron pair donor ep is the electron pair note on this point nowadays 
coordinate bond is considered as a type of a type of covalent bond okay so there are two cases to represent the coordinate bond we have two cases case 1 as a type of covalent bond if the elements if the elements belongs to second period belongs to second period okay so in this case what happens suppose we have a lone pair donor an atom a and b is the lone pair acceptor or electron pair donor is a and this one is electron pair acceptor b so in this case when the both atom belongs to when the donor atom belongs to second period then what we assume first that this donates one electron to this b half arrow means only one electron okay half arrow means only one electron and then it converts into a with one electron positive charge because it donates one electron and b with one electron negative charge right and then we have the sharing of electron between the two because both has one one unpaired electron a makes a bond with b by sharing of electron positive and negative this becomes the coordinate bond so in this kind of thing the coordinate bond is represented by a simple bond like this simple single bond this way there is no arrow like this like this it is represented plus and minus first it donates one electron becomes one electron each on these ions we have one on b one on a and then the sharing of electron between them the sharing of electron it gives you a coordinate bond so this kind of you know we define the coordinate bond nowadays this way so this is the coordinate bond right now then now if the donor elements belongs to third or higher period case 2 wait a minute yeah see covalent bond what happens in covalent bond you just try to understand this with an example first of all you see the coordinate bond old lamb the thing is what the shared pair of electron in coordinate bond originates from the same atom one single atom here nitrogen gives its electron and forms a bond with hydrogen Here A is giving its electron and forms a bond with B. 
but in co in covalent bond both atom give its electron and takes part in the bonding like this one you see suppose you have hcl right so in hcl we have one electron of hydrogen and then one electron of chlorine but that is not happening in coordinate bond are you getting my point ansh yes so that is the difference between the coordinate bond and the covalent bond coordinate bond the bond pair of electron originates from the same atom here both atom gives its electron and forms and share its electron and forms a bond that's the difference between the coordinate bond and uh, uh you know covalent bond but now coordinate bond is considered as a type of covalent bond. and that is how we define it one electron a donates first to b a b will have a negative charge a will have a positive charge when both ion has one one electron sharing takes place and forms a covalent bond right now in case 2 if elements belongs to if elements belongs to third or a higher period third or a higher period the coordinate bond coordinate bond is shown by by a double bond like for example so3 sulfur trioxide if you see the structure of this s double bond o a coordinate bond with oxygen again a coordinate bond with oxygen but in the recent you know development this coordinate bond is represented by a double bond like this and a double bond like this both are correct but this is the current or the modern you know concept of it double bond this is not a double bond actually it is a coordinate bond between sulfur and oxygen okay so this is the two cases we have suppose if you have nh3 some more examples we take nh3 with one lone pair and one h plus so what happens this nh3 give its one electron to this h plus because this is the second period element one electron to this h plus and then we'll have here n h h h unpaired electron positive charge and h won't have any charge with only one electron because it has positive charge takes one electron the positive charge goes off and it has one electron now now in this we say the sharing of electron takes place n and h both has one one electron So it converts into n h positive charge on nitrogen and this n h four plus. So this is the coordinate bond. Did you understand this? Why this is required? Because we have observed that the molecules which has coordinate bond or the molecules which has covalent bond, they have similar properties. Then they started thinking of that if the properties are similar, then maybe there will be some similarities in the bonding, right? and that's how they got to know this particular thing no in case of a triple in case of a second period element it is just a single bond like this i have shown in nh4 plus when case 2 it is there when case 2 see this is the example of the first case case 2 is this so3 third period element 
a double bond. Done. Okay. Next slide down. Properties of the compound. Write down the properties of the compound having having. Covalent or coordinate bond. Or coordinate bond. First one is the physical state. physical state right on the physical state of these compounds these components compounds having these two type of bond okay the physical state of these bonds are mainly liquid or gas the physical state of these bonds are mainly liquid or gas but some may exist in but some may exist as soft solid but some may exist as soft solid Okay, some may exist as soft solid. Mainly it is liquid or gas, but some may exist as soft solid. Like for example, you see molecules like I2, iodine, S8, P4, these are soft solid. Molecules like F2, Cl2, these are gases mainly. Br2 is liquid. Right? All these things you must know. Keep that in mind, then, the state of this. This kind of compound generally has low melting point and boiling point. Melting point and boiling points are low here. But there are some compound exception you can consider as diamond. or carborundum, SIC is carborundum. Which has boiling point, right, which has melting point more than to that of ionicum. Right? 
more than to that of any compound. Write down. Melting point is more. Write down these compounds are generally bad conductor of electricity. Bad conductor of electricity. But some of the compounds, but some of the compounds may show, may show conductive nature. But some of the compounds may show conductive nature. may show conductive nature because of its polar nature because of its polar nature or self ionization because of its polar nature or self ionization for example water molecule h2o may get self ionized like this it converts into h3o plus and oh minus okay because of its ions it shows conductive behavior right graphite another another uh, uh, exception here graphite also conducts electricity electricity because of free electron so these are the general rules but there are some you know exception we have fourth one dissolves in in non polar solvent because these compounds covalent compounds are non polar so non polar compounds dissolve in non polar solvent right polar compounds dissolve in polar solvents okay we know this rule by this we we, we memorize this rule by this like dissolves like okay like dissolves like means polar dissolve in polar non polar dissolve in non polar okay covalent bond is directional in nature bond is directional in nature and hence and hence shows isomerism and hence shows isomerism so in the molecule isomerism exists because of polar uh, sorry because of covalent or coordinate bond these compounds are generally shows molecular reaction generally shows molecular reaction molecular reactions are those reactions in which some new bond forms and some old bond breaks and these reactions get over or get finished in finite time Okay, like in an hour or two, it's not like it takes months 
like rusting of iron. It's very slow process, not a molecular reaction, right? Uh, neutralization reaction, acid base is extremely fast, right? Not a molecular reaction. Those are ionic reactions. Neutralization reactions are ionic reactions. Okay, so write down the covalent compound. Covalent compound shows molecular reaction shows molecular reaction which involves bond dissociation and bond bond dissociation and bond formation which involves bond dissociation and bond formation and it takes finite time for completion and it takes finite time for completion just a second priyam okay i'm repeating myself covalent compound gives molecular reaction covalent compound gives molecular reaction which involves bond dissociation and bond formation which involves bond dissociation and bond formation and it takes finite time for the completion of reaction okay and it takes finite time for the completion of reaction for example n2 plus 3h2 gives 2 nh3 all our gases Okay, I'll repeat. Did you write, guys? Okay, I'll go to the previous slide and I'll repeat this uh, one again. See, I said molecular reaction. Covalent compound gives molecular reaction, which involves bond dissociation or bond formation, and it takes finite time for the completion. And it takes finite time for the completion of reaction. Did you write all of you? So these are the few properties of the compounds having covalent and coordinate bond, and ionic we have already discussed. Correct. Now we have theories of covalent bond. Like what all theories we have? Uh, because of that, the formation of covalent bond takes place. Okay. We'll discuss that, but before that, we'll see what is octet rule. Okay, what is octet rule? We'll start this after the break. Okay, we'll resume the session at six twenty. Is it fine?